Hello, my name is John Oliver. I am the Information Literacy Librarian at the College of New Jersey. I am also the Liaison Librarian for the School of Nursing and the School of Public Health, which means that I'm assigned to help support the faculty and students in the Health Sciences schools at the college. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about assignments that are in the class Nursing 571. And these, the resources I'm going to point you to are intended to help you with the assignments related to curriculum development and curriculum evaluation. And I'm going to show you three different uh, resources and three different kind of tactics for looking for information. And I just want to start by acknowledging that I understand that uh, when we look for information nowadays, we look for ideally a one-stop shop. And, and I won't deny that the most convenient thing is to find one source for all of our information. But for good or bad, it doesn't often play out that way. Um, often enough, it is true that looking in two or three different places in a smart, focused, and brief way can be faster than spending a ton of time frustrated and struggling in one source. And so the, the impulse that we naturally have for going to one place for all of our information is actually counterproductive to us and harmful to us because it easily wires our brains to think, oh, I just have to, you know, keep experimenting with the search words in this one search box. And in this in this brief lesson today, I'm going to show you how changing search boxes, and I'll show you three different search boxes that are very helpful, how changing search boxes in a smart way is actually faster and going to give you better results. Okay, so I also want to start and mention here near the beginning that there are supports and resources for you as you work through this, uh, through this course and through these assignments. First and foremost, I, I want to suggest that you lean on your course instructor for support in working through the assignments on the course. You are not alone and your prof can offer guidance for how to successfully meet the you know, the expectations of the course and of these assignments. So you can, of course, do this in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And it would also be helpful, I would suggest, to, to do this to some degree in whole class discussions so that your classmates can benefit from whatever information you, you gather. Uh, and then second of all, something that's a little more in terms of my area of responsibility is I want you to consider that librarians can offer some help with aspects of your work. Uh, and in this video today, I'm going to point you to the databases where you're most likely to find the materials you'll need. And I'm going to try to show you some approaches that will give you uh, the self-empowerment and, the, and the, the power to work on your own. But there's a very good chance that, that I'll leave some gaps in understanding uh, despite my best efforts. So if you do have questions after this video, you can get help through our Ask a Librarian service. Uh, it is available on our library homepage, which I'll show you now. On the library homepage, um, there is a drawer that is right here on the right hand side that slides out um, that is open many of the hours of the day. There is a live human librarian on the on the other end of this. This is not a artificial intelligence bot or something that's answering questions. This is a real real intelligence a human on the other end. Um, there are other ways to reach out for help and you can find those under research help, ask a librarian, but the drawer is the most common you know, and easy way to, to get help. So keep that in mind. Let's see here, what else do I want to mention? Um, okay, so let me start with, as I think about these assignments and finding resources for these assignments, uh, let me just say a few things about the some of the leaps you have to make in order to be successful with these assignments. You can you can manage these leaps, but there are kind of conceptual, there are two main conceptual challenges. So one is let me just address the one that has to do with the national national league for nursing report card which is this curriculum report card i have it uh, in a word document right here um, the first challenge is that the way these are written and, and maybe some of this will come up in your class and i encourage as i said i encourage you to talk about this with your classmates with your prof in classes um, the first thing is that the way that they're written i have to say is not does not lay the groundwork for intuitive, easy research. 
and, and I'll articulate what I mean by that. So um, this hallmark number two, which I'm highlighting right here, hallmark number two talks about a curriculum providing experiential cultural learning activities that enhance students' abilities to think critically, reflect thoughtfully, and provide culturally sensitive evidence-based nursing care to diverse populations. And I happen to be trained as a writer, and so maybe I can be a little critical about the way things are written, but I just want to point out to you, when you're doing research for this, for the, for this course and for these assignments, there, this, this sentence is not helpful to you right off the bat. And so what I mean by that is that you might have to, in order to find materials about a program, you know, you're going to have to find materials. Uh, let me go back to the assignment description right here. Um, you're going to have to look at the strengths and weaknesses of a program, and you're going to have to look about uh, the concerns that you have about a program, about implementing this program. And so you're going to look at a, at a specific school or a specific college. Uh, or university, and you're going to evaluate their, you know, a particular program there, I assume a nursing program. And so as you're doing that, you're going to be looking for materials that talk about the concepts that are in the NLN Excellence Hallmarks. Now, the, the concepts that are in the NLN Excellence Hallmarks are, are phrased in a confusing way here, uh, in like I said, with all these words. And so what I would just suggest, if you had to find materials about hallmark number two, take note of the, the items that appear under it. So I'm, I'm clicking through some of these here. Um, th this is the brief description of the hallmark, and these are the elements of it. And that's why you see you'd have to give it a, a zero or a two or a four on these one through five on these items here and the the brief description here is intended to be a kind of overview or a synthesis and there isn't a ranking there you, you just you just that's just the the description of it that's the you know the headline so to speak so the, all of that all of it's a whole lot of words to say that hallmark number two as someone who's reading this, you know, reading this is very clearly about cultural competency. It's about working with diverse populations, and that's there. Um, what's confusing is the fourth word is experiential. It's experiential learning. So the point is that as you read these hallmarks, the 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 words near the beginning may or may not be the main theme. Experiential learning is not actually the theme of. Uh, NLM Excellence Hallmark number two. The theme is uh, cultures different than your own, cultural sensitivity, culturally competent, um, examine values, biases, stereotyping, cultural competence. So you see there's a definite theme that emerges if you look at the items that are under the description, but that the description themselves it can be a little confusing. And so I'm sorry if I, I belabored that point a little bit, but the point is, so if we're thinking about searching, a key thing we have to think about is what words do we type into a search box? And so please uh, give some thought to how you, which words you type, and the things that are gonna help inform what you type into a search box are these items that, I, that I'm highlighting here, more so than the words that you'll find in these, these uh, brief descriptions, which, I would argue have have some some limitations. Anyway, so I'm going to talk, you know, as I move along, I'm going to talk about cultural competence as an example of, of one of the hallmarks you'll have to find information about. So that's the one generalization, the kind of conceptual leap I mentioned before. The other, you know, it's, it's a little more logistical and less conceptual, but it is something you have to think about in terms of, of concepts, is that the, the assignments that you are working on for this class will ask you, especially this one, the uh, curriculum plan evaluation, asks you to use the NLN report card to evaluate a program, you know, a, a, a school that you're going to analyze. So you're going to find a, a nursing program and you're going to analyze it. You're going to describe the program, you're going to describe its strengths and weaknesses, and you're going to use, for strengths and weaknesses, you're going to use that NLN report card. Uh, that's my understanding of this assignment. The, the reason I'm lingering here is you are very unlikely to find in the literature that talks about strengths and weaknesses of nursing curriculum, you are not likely to find a specific school mentioned when when people talk about best practices for um, 
nursing school curriculum. What you'll find is, you know, research that that talks about what makes for a strong program and what makes for a weak program, but in a more general sense and not so much in the specific name of a school or university or college. So that that second, you know, con conceptual leap that I was mentioning here is that you do not want to Google for example, you don't don't want to do searches on, for example, the College of New Jersey nursing program strengths and weaknesses. Um, you're unlikely to find someone who's done the work of evaluating it and publishing a scholarly journal article. So what you'll be doing is looking in a slightly more general, less specific way, you'll be looking for the strengths and weaknesses of a nursing program defined more generally and less specifically. Okay, so those are two important things to wrap your head around because it would be easy to A, go over to the the report card itself and get confused about, well, what is Hallmark 1 about? What is Hallmark 2 about? To be perfectly honest, you have to read the the items underneath in order to, oops, you have to read these these items underneath in order to, to get a better sense of what they're about and what search words you'd use to find materials about the, the, the respective Hallmarks. And then the other thing I, I mentioned just now is that the um, the assignment that you have to do, you're going to have to make a little bit of a leap from from strengths and weaknesses and curriculum development considerations more generally and then apply that to the specific school that you are you are going to be analyzing okay so i understand that was a little bit verbose um, but that's a very important to get our heads wrapped around what we need to do as we jump into this searching so today I'm going to talk about three resources for finding materials for this course. I'm going to talk about CINAHL, PubMed, and a very, very specific way of using Google Scholar. So anyway, we'll start with CINAHL. And in each of these search boxes, there's a variety of ways to do it. You can just type the words that come to mind based on concepts here. Um, we could type cultural competency and and um, and curriculum here, uh, we could we could do that kind of stuff. But what I want to point out today is something you might not have noticed that that kind of hides in the open in the margins here, is the CINAHL subject headings. Now subject headings, uh, actually let me leap ahead to to what a, a subject heading is. So as I say, these subject headings are very powerful, but they can be a little bit hard to wrap your head around them. If they're if they're described in uh, in a less than skillful way, so what these these subject headings are is they are the human applied descriptions of what the article is about. Um, that's that's what they're called subject headings. The subject of the article is is these things, um, and so what you'll see is this article here is an example. It does service learning affect the development of intercultural sensitivity? Uh, the reason this is a good example is that. Regardless of whether an article says uh, intercultural sensitivity or cultural competence, like the actual subject heading is, or if it says um, diversity training or cultural competency rather than cultural competence, um, all of those things end up in one folder called cultural competence. It's, it's a way of system, systematically applying the meaning descriptions of these articles. Um, you know, one by one. And so humans who are experts in on these subjects say uh, these articles are about these things. And they're a little bit like hashtags, but only in the sense that they collect things that are very similar. They are very different from hashtags in the sense that hashtags are applied in a very unsystematic way that kind of emerges organically from the community, the, the many, many people who apply them. These are applied by relatively few people who systematically do it. And so what we do is rather than having to worry about um, matching cultural competence as a search word in the abstract or in the title or somewhere else, we know that a human applied this this definition, uh, th this label of cultural competence. And so that's what we're ultimately trying to do is land on an article that has subject headings. It's about the subjects that we are interested in. Um, and so the way we do that is, again, going back to the very beginning on the new search, and if we, this is where we land when we land on CINAHL, uh, we go to, actually, let me take a step back. Um, the way you get to CINAHL, which I think I forgot to mention, um, 
in case you're not already aware, is you go to the library homepage, you can go to TCNJ library on, on Google if you like, or you can go to library.tcnj.edu, and then go to databases. And that takes you to a list of all of the departments and majors here at the college. And so that's how we organize the databases, one way that we do it. And so here you can go to nursing databases and you'll find all the databases that we recommend, that we the librarians recommend that nursing students use. And then we, we recommend um, students who aren't in the health sciences schools, that this is how you can do health sciences research, even if you're not in, for example, the nursing program. Okay, so if we go to CINAHL, that will launch the database. Actually, once I click this, and so if you're off campus and for the, you're logging in for the first time for that day, you might have to log in with your username and password, but, but hopefully you're already familiar with that. So once you land on uh, in the CINAHL database, you want to go to the very top uh, bar here and click CINAHL subject headings. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for for this, I'm going to look for the subject headings. And so what we're doing here is we're looking for, we're actually searching the kind of dictionary of, of the terms that are used to systematically describe the meaning of the articles in CINAHL. Uh, and so I, I purposely used cultural sensitivity because, excuse my uh, jump over here, in, in the hallmark of excellence, that's actually what's mentioned, culturally sensitive evidence-based nursing care. And so let's just say I, I go over to CINAHL and I type the words that come to mind or the words that have been used in my documents. And it turns out that this is a different kind of cultural sensitivity. This is a microbial cultural sensitivity. And so if we look through a little bit, there's some other you know, microbiology type stuff here. And then ultimately we get to cultural diversity, we get to cultural competence. And so what I would suggest is click cultural competence and then we're going to click on major concept. That's actually the heading here. Major concept is this checkbox. We can we can of course double check that this is what we're looking for. Yes, indeed, this sure sounds like what we're looking for. And so what I do is you can, you can use these subheadings of the subject headings, but for now let's just skip over these, um, and we're going to include all of them. We're not going to limit it even further. But the major subject, major concept, we've already selected include all and then we go and then we're actually searching the database of articles so what we were just doing there was searching the database of terminology and then now we just now found all of the documents in all of CINAHL there are 5,475 articles about cultural competency and as a major concept of that article now you could of course look through these um, but I would suggest you you do some of that I mean it, it only takes a few minutes to read one page of results so so you might consider doing that but what I, for now what I'd suggest you do is go back to the CINAHL subject headings we're going to do a new one and we're going to look for curriculum because that's what this course is focused on and I'm going to take I'm going to select curriculum and also curriculum development I want them both to be major concepts and then I'm going to click on uh, also this explode button. So explode refers to the fact that there are, it's a little bit of a bizarre terminology, but it basically, oops, uh, explode means that there are more narrow, there are narrower terms than curriculum. So under curriculum, there is course content, course evaluation, integrated curriculum. And let's just say we want all of those more narrow uh, terms. Uh, I think explode refers to almost like expand, so we're kind of expanding this tree to, to include more the, the more specific and more narrow things. And so, so what we've done is we click on um, curriculum, explode, major concept, and then the, uh, by doing that we're going to get curriculum development automatically. So, so we don't even have to do that. Um, it's there for extra anyway, extra bonus. Um, and then, so that is all of the documents in all of CINAHL that the major topic of which is curriculum. So it's 13,720. Now what we have to do is combine those two threads of curriculum and cultural competence. To do that, click search history. Actually clear out the search box first. So we do this, click these two search boxes, combine them with and, which means that we want, um, we need both of those concepts to be present. That's why we say and. So we want cult we want every article we find to be about both cultural competence and curriculum, um, or would be one or the other, and that would be that would be less helpful. So we're going to say search with and. 
And then what we get is 146. The, the results are actually displayed a little bit further down. And you see this is how I found the example I already showed you. And so what you have here is, as you're working through your assignments, this would be a list of 146 articles. Actually, let me limit the date before I go any further, because you do have a date limit on your assignments. So 47 articles. Again, those are right down here. So 47 articles that talk about the theme of cultural competence and curriculum. And so therefore, my sense is that those are very closely related to Hallmark, excuse me, uh, Hallmark number two, the curriculum provides blah, 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 diverse populations, cultural competence, right? So the, this is how you'd find articles that support the basis for why this is an important part of curriculum, that cultural competence is an important part of curriculum. And that, that's how you would find those articles. Okay, 47 of them in this case. Um, there are other ways to find other articles, but this is maybe one way to get started. Moving on to PubMed. PubMed is a massive database. As you see here, it has literally 32 million citations in it, and it is the full biomedical literature. It is. Uh, it has nursing information in there. It has other life sciences. It, it has so many things in it that it's actually can be challenging to use, which is why I'm hoping to, to walk you through some approaches that will make it a little easier. To get to PubMed, go to the library homepage again, scroll down to databases and click databases, then scroll down and click nursing databases, and then on this page, scroll down and click PubMed, and then click PubMed one more time. PubMed is put together by the National Library of Medicine, which is one of the National Institutes of Health. Um, maybe some of you are already familiar with that. Um, so again, as I said with CINAHL, it would be possible to just type words in here. Um, sensitivity training, nursing, you know, we could, we could type stuff in. Um, but again, what I'd recommend you do is try the subject headings and they work a little bit different, different interface, a little different uh, set of clicks here. But if we go to advanced and what we get is a, what they call the search builder. And so we're going to be looking in specific fields. So what we're going to do is look at the mesh major topic. So this is a little bit like CINAHL's um, subject heading major concepts but MESH stands for Medical Subject Heading. So you see the subject heading terminology is the same. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, take a guess at what, over in CINAHL, the preferred term was cultural competence. And so I'm going to say show index. And then it's going to show the articles that are, uh, sorry, it's going to show not articles, but it's going to show the terms that are close to cultural competence. Now, here's an interesting thing. This is a little bit different than how I did it over in CINAHL, but you notice here there is a slash, there's cultural competence C, which this is the official term where CINAHL says cultural competence. Uh, PubMed uses cultural competence C. Um, if we were going to do it exactly like we did in CINAHL, we would click this and, and add it and, and go on. But what I want to suggest instead is that you take cultural competency slash education major topic. And then we're going to add that to the search. And then while we're still here, actually just we can launch that search. And what we get is a list of the 758 items that are about teaching cultural competency. And so what you might consider doing in this case is adding I would type with all caps and so again we want to we want more than one concept we want the concept of nursing and also the concept of cult, uh, cultural competency and the teaching of cultural competency and we can pare down this 758 and focus it in on nursing programs and we click on search and we get down to 315 pretty quickly uh, of course the date range is is a little bit off so you have to change it to 2016 to, to fit within the requirements of your assignment and you're automatically down to 110 um, and so PubMed would give you slightly different it would be overlapping with CINAHL there would be some stuff you see in both places but you will definitely see a ton that is unique to each database so so it's it's a it's a uh, uh, kind of gentle way of saying you need to look in both places in order to find the, the relevant material. 
The next thing I want to talk about is Google Scholar. Um, now you can go directly to Google Scholar by typing scholar.google.com, um, but what I want to I want to discourage you from doing that and instead I want to encourage you to go to the library homepage which I've already talked about a bit and then you want to scroll down and you want to click on this link for Google Scholar and the reason to do that is that by doing so many many more instantaneous full text PDFs will be served up because TCNJ we tell Google what we have and they just they just put it right here and to give you an example um, it, it just, I, I just took an article that we found over in PubMed and you see the PDF is just sitting right there. The, the, link, the link to the PDF is sitting right over here. Um, and then as you do other searches in Google Scholar through the TCNJ link, you'll get similar very easy links to, to what you're looking for. Now, you can, of course, search Google Scholar with your search words. You can, you can type in words like cultural competence and you know nursing curriculum. Um, you could do that kind of thing. Um, I recommend you start in in all in PubMed and instead use Google Scholar for just this one thing. So it's it's a it's an approach you can use for every class regardless of whether it's nursing or, or anything else, any topic. Uh, it's a very powerful tool where we can see the scholarly discourse around one set of ideas almost instantaneously. So I take this one article here that I found over in PubMed and it's 2016, so it, I'm allowed to use it for this class, for this assignment, because it's, it's less than five years old. So let's say you, you do read it, but you want more material in this vein. You can highlight and copy the um, article title and then go over to Google Scholar and, and you know, paste in the title. And you'll get, you know, you'll get a search result list of one usually. Uh, that's not the compelling part. What is interesting is that this cited by 26 is a list of the 26 scholars who have returned to the same topic after 2016. And so what this is, is something was published originally and then other people interacted with it, other scholars interacted with it. And so this is the literal scholarly conversation around the topic of cultural competence centered on the, the node, the, the, the point of this one article, which was written again in 2016. And then since then, these other 26 articles or books have mentioned it in their works cited pages. Now, this is a essentially a list of related items. However, it's more than just a list of related items as deemed by Google's creepy algorithm or some kind of word frequency mathematical thing. This is actually, as I say, the conversation. So uh, this is DJ Drevdal wrote an article in 2018 and somewhere in their article they mention this first article. So it's they're literally in a conversation. They're literally interacting with, debating, clarifying, um, contradicting or amplifying something else that's been written. And so this is precisely what your profs do when they publish. This is precisely what your profs are thinking of when they're asking you to cite, citate, you know, to cite references from scholarly literature. They're, they're asking you to jump into a scholarly conversation around concepts. Um, and, and, and the cited by feature allows you to do it. So it's definitely, it's very powerful. Um, you notice here, because we use the uh, TCNJ link to Google Scholar, there are lots of full text links that are just kind of floating over here on the right-hand side. Uh, so definitely this is an example of something where you can, you can take an article that is too old for the constraints that have been given to you for your assignment, and you can put a very old article, like a good example here. Um, here's an example of an easy win that I wanted to show you is that the, sorry, I did a little bit of jumping around there. The National League for Nursing, when they put together their report card, so you see they have that, this report card you're gonna be interacting with. Um, they put together the curriculum report card. They also put together a resources list, essentially a bibliography of, of journal articles, books, websites that they found useful. And so when you click on that, it opens in a, in a Word doc over here. It's the resources section of the toolkit to accompany the curriculum report card. And so what you see is these articles, because the report card was created in circa 2008, 2009, um, the articles are from that time period. So they're, they're too old for you to cite in your, 
your, your paper according to the constraints of your assignment. But we could see, well, this article was written um, and informed this report card that's so important to your, you know, your class and your assignment. We could copy that, jump back over to Google Scholar, and we could see, well, after 2008, where did that conversation go? And so we can click on 2008. Uh, it's, as I said, it's too old for your assignment, but if we click on Cited by 16, and then here we can give a custom range, and we can say, hey, Google, give me only the things that cited that old article and also were published since 2016. We get seven articles that picked up the thread, picked up the, um, the momentum of that older article. And you see it, it can be a very easy way to get from an article that you're technically not allowed to use uh, in, this in these assignments in this course to articles that you would be allowed to use. So you see that to me, this the title of this article um, sounds very close to the title of this article, Preparing Teacher Scholars to Reduce Health Disparities. This article is about health inequities in nursing curriculum. If I were in your shoes, I would read this article. If I were interested in in the theme of of this um, of this course and, and of this uh, these hallmarks, uh, the other thing that's interesting about Google Scholar is that it can be a really good. Uh, I hesitate to refer to a one-stop shop, but if at any point you you encounter a abstract, you encounter a title or an abstract, you encounter the information for an article, but the full text is uh, is eluding you. This this Google Scholar link, as I said, if you go to I'll repeat it, so you know for sure how to get there. Uh, on the library homepage, you scroll down and use this Google Scholar link just about every time that we have instantaneous full text access to an article, it will be served up here by Google Scholar. So the point is that if you do a search in PubMed where the, the full text links are honestly a little goofy, um, you could take the title of an article, highlight it, copy it, jump over to Google Scholar, paste in the title, and the full text will, will be presented if we have it. So Google Scholar is a good um, utility kind of tool, um, but definitely spend some time in CINAHL and PubMed as well. Uh, and if you have any questions, as I said, be sure to reach out to Ask a Librarian. Um, one way to get there, as I said, on the uh, library homepage, oops, there's the drawer that, that pops out here. All right, well, good luck with your coursework.